Alrighty then, let's do some advanced relationship queries. And now, if you didn't watch the previous video and enter the data, then what you can do is you can click on the link attached to this video, create a new file called insertuser.js. So this has all of the data attached to it. And then all you have to do is import that file and then call it because that file um, is importing a function that is then going to add in all of the data. However, keep in mind, if you haven't followed all of the previous videos and added all these classes as well, it's not going to work. So actually I might even create a file for all of these um, classes too. All right, so let's get started. First, we'll run yarn serve. And while that's running, I'm going to scroll up to the top and we're going to replace this with some pre-tags. So if you watch the other video with queries, the pre-tag basically lets us display JSON data in a really nice way that's easy to view. And we're gonna set that to results. And let's go ahead and create a computed property for that, results. And that's going to return whatever our query is. So let's start by importing the user. Import user from dot dot slash classes slash user. And let's do some queries on the user. So just to check that everything works, we'll call user.all. Open up this link. And there we go, we've got all of the users there. So we'll start with the basics. We can also call user.query start chaining and then we can say dot with posts so let's give that a go and we have to call get of course and there we go so we've got the users with all of their posts we can also go deeper so if we want the posts and the comments we can say dot comments save that so we've got our posts and we've got the comments nested in there as well now if we want another chart of posts we can use the all symbol so we can say comments or tags. So that'll give us the post with the comments and the post with the tags. So let's have a look at that. And so we're pulling through the comments in the post and we're also pulling through all of the tags. So that's really cool. And there's actually a couple of other ways that we can write this. So what we could do is turn this into an array and we could say posts.comments and also give me the posts.tags. And that's going to give us the exact same thing. And another way, and this is actually how I prefer to do it, is to say post.comments, and then I just chain another with post.tags, but it totally depends on what you like. So if we refresh the page, that also works. Another thing we can do is say with all, and that's going to give us everything that the user owns, but only one level deep. Okay, so save that. So there's these posts. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Also the comments as well. So if we scroll down here, some of these guys have comments. The reason we're getting comments there is because a user also has a direct relationship to the comments. So a post has comments, but also a user has comments. Okay, so with all is just going to give us uh, the things that that user owns, but it's not going to go any deeper than that. If we wanna go deeper though, we can say with all, recursive. So let's save that, refresh the page. And there we go. It's basically going uh, as deep as it can. And what you can do here is you can say just how deep you want to go. So if we go one level deep, check this out. We only get the posts with the comments. Okay. But if we go another level deep, then you'll notice that we get the user with the comments as well, because a comment has many users. So check this out. Let's go another level deep. So we're getting the posts, uh, where is it? Here's the comments, and then here's the user with that. And we can go pretty crazy here. So you could go like five levels deep. Um, it's pretty amazing how quickly it loads all of this, by the way. So posts, uh, there's a user that belongs to that post. There's all of that user's posts, and the user that belongs to that post, and all of that user's posts. So basically, it's just repeating itself now. So that's a little bit crazy. To be honest, I don't even use this command. I've never used it before. But hey, it's nice to know it's there. There's probably good reasons that you might use with or recursive. Another thing we can do is say with, and then when we grab the comments, for example, we can say dot, and then the time symbol, the little star. And basically, that's going to give us all of the things that the comments own. So let's save that. Actually, a better example of this is probably posts. So user with all of their posts and then all of 
the children of those posts. So if we come and have a look here, yeah, a post has a user, a post has comments, and it looks like a post has tags as well. Yeah, so they're all sitting under the post now. So that could be pretty handy for you. And so that's the basic stuff. Now let's move on to the really powerful things, which are relationship constraints. This is where we get to do really cool things like manipulate our results. So we'll start with a simple example. Let's say user dot with posts. And what we can do here is pass through a second argument, which will be a function. And then with this function, we accept the query. And it's kind of like what we were talking about in the other video about relationships. Now this query though, instead of relating to the user, the query is going to allow us to filter results based on the post that we're currently on. So we could say query dot where published is equal to true. So if you come over here, we notice that some of them have the published flag. So now if I save that, we're only going to get the posts that are published. Oh, and the reason that's not working is because we didn't call get. Yeah, I'd say that's it, dot get. Save that, refresh the page, and we will now only get published posts. So let's scroll down a little bit, check that. Yeah, so Shannon and Prince don't have any published posts at the moment. So let's jump back into our data and actually give them a published post just to check that it works. So here we go, here's Shannon. There's one of her posts, let's set it to published, true. And there we go, now a nutrition stuff post is published. All right, so coming back, another thing we can do is say posts.comments, okay, like in before, but now the query is going to be equal to comments. So the query is going to be equal to the last thing that we pass through here. So if we said posts.comments.user, then the query would be querying based on the user. All right, so let's go through the comments. And we want all of the comments where type is equal to review. So all of the comments that still need to be reviewed. And there we go. There's one of the comments and another one that needs to be reviewed. And now we could say review duh. So the ones that already have been reviewed. And I think that'll remove all of them. I'm not sure we had any reviewed comments. Yeah, so that gives us no comments. However, if we come back into our data now, Let's grab a comment. So this is for the Shannon Nutrition Stuff post. And let's set reviewed equal to true. Oh, sorry, type equal to <laughs> reviewed. Probably didn't name that very well, but that's okay. Oh, put a comma there. And then that should come through. And it does. So that's really cool as well. Coming back, we can also check to see if relationships exist. So we're going to query on post now. We'll say post.query, and we want to know if this post has any comments. So only give me the posts that actually have some comments. Save that. What have I done wrong here? Oh, we have an imported post, so let's come up here. I'm just going to copy that down. Control D, post. Scrolling down, refresh the page. There we go. So these are all of the posts that actually have comments. We can also set a number here. So we can say it has to have at least two comments. And there we go, we've only got one post that has two comments. So that's pretty cool. You could sort of grab all of the posts that are the most popular based on how many comments there are. But it turns out we actually have even more power here. So we can pass through a second argument that says greater than. So we could say we have to have more than one comment. And that's actually gonna give us the same thing. Or you could say, only give me the posts that have less than or equal to one comment. And there we go, that gives us a different result. So we've got a lot of flexibility here. Now, as it turns out, we've got even more flexibility. Check this out, if we say where has, and now we can say the post where it has comments, but only if that comment passes this query, okay? So only the comments that come through as a result of this query. So now we could say query dot where, um, maybe like where the user ID is equal to one. All right, so let's read through this. Give me, whoop, give me all of the posts where it has comments, but that comment has to have a user ID of one. All right, so let's try that. Oh, I've forgotten to call get again. 
refresh the page. All right, so it looks like I haven't commented on any of the posts. So let's change this to two. So view stuff is a post and it has comments that are commented by the user with an ID of two. In fact, we could probably even check that by saying dot with here comments. And there we go. There's the user with an ID of two. So that works. I think that's really amazing, this kind of power that we get. And if you get to know all of these queries, you get to take total control of your data, which is really exciting. I never really felt like I had this sort of control with my data before Vuke's ORM. It's like I could do these queries, but I had to really, you know, rake my brain to figure out what they would look like. Whereas now it's just like a piece of cake. What else? So we've also got the opposite of has. We can say has not. So how about has not comments? So give me all of the posts that don't have comments. And there we go, that works. And of course, we can also say where has not. And then when we add the where symbol here, when we add the where word here, uh, just like where has, it means that we can take in the query object. So give me the post where it has not got comments where, query dot where, the user ID is equal to one. So this is um, a bit hard to wrap your head around. There we go. So these are all of the posts that don't have comments by a person with an ID of one. So these are all the thing, posts that I have not commented on. So how about all of the posts that Shannon has not commented on? There they are. So that might not be the best example, but it's nice to know that we've got the where has not uh, command as well. And there you have it. If you can watch these couple of videos uh, and watch them a couple of times so you get a really good feel for these queries, I've tried to make them fast so that you can watch over them and review them. Uh, and if you find them to be too fast, then make sure you use that pause button as much as you need. And then just spend some time looking at the screen and nutting it out. See, I used to do this all the time when I was learning coding, I just pause the video, look at the screen and wait for my brain to catch up and really figure out what the queries are doing in these examples. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you can grok this, then it's all smooth sailing from here. See you in the next video where we're going to go through some more really cool stuff. Bye for now.